Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I have our latest and greatest and newest Land Geek coach, Jeff Detmer. Jeff, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, Jeff, for those of, of us who have not met you at a boot camp, have not seen you in a mastermind call, have not gone through some type of coaching with you. Tell us a little bit about how you found the Land Geek and what you have done since starting. Well, how much time do you have? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I could make it a long story, but I won't. Uh, so, you know, like a lot of people, um, I first found you and the idea of land investing um, on a podcast. Um, I heard you interviewed on someone else's podcast. And at the time, um, I was uh, um, kind of entrenched, if you will, um, in the self-storage business. And your model immediately resonated with me because you had a whole bunch of people paying you a couple hundred dollars a month. And once you made that sale, there wasn't a whole lot to do, which is kind of a lot like self-storage. People rent a storage unit, they move in. And then they keep paying every month until they move out. And so I really like that model. And so, um, you know, it was just a little different with raw land rather than uh, garage doors, but um, it really resonated with me. And so I then looked up your podcast and went back to the beginning of time and listened to every single one of yours um, way back, the old ones. The old, the old OG podcasts. Yeah, yeah. They were a little bit... Um, uh, less polished back then. But anyway, it was very authentic. But I just, I felt very connected to you, even though we hadn't met. And then, um, you know, I things went forward, you and I talked on the phone, and um, I got uh, moving forward into the land business. And, and uh, within pretty short order, uh, toolkit, flight school, boot camp coaching, and um, and I was off to the races and uh, um, and was was in the business and and building a brand new business. Wow. I mean, it, how, how long ago was that? Was that? I want to see if you can guess. I want to say five, <laughs> I want to say five years ago. Six. Six years ago. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. time has, <laughs> has flown by. You know, what's interesting about self-storage is that as a real estate class, it has the lowest default rates that in mobile home parks so it's like the safest of all the real estate plays but it's so interesting the way your mind would work to think oh this is a very similar model but there are some differences between self storage and the raw land model what what do you think is the biggest difference for you well the biggest well i don't know about the biggest um but you know one of the big differences is um, with self storage, someone needs to be there regularly, and in my case, that person is me because at at my at my core, I'm a do it yourself kind of guy. That's just who I am. That's how I was raised, and it's in my blood. Um, which has been a little bit of a challenge for me uh, with the land business in like getting out of my own way. Uh, because of my do-it-yourself DNA, but anyway, that's a separate thing. But um, but with the land business, like I've never been to any of the, I don't know, several hundred pieces of properties uh, that I've bought. So I've never seen them uh, except on uh, Google Earth, for example. And so you know that's that's one big difference. But um, I guess another big difference is uh, depreciation. Um, it's nice to have depreciation because of having real buildings on real property, but those real buildings also needs maintenance. Right on on raw land, there's not really anything to maintain, and so um, you know, this year I'm doing a large asphalt paving project at my storage facility. Two years ago, I put a new roof on a building. Like you know, some of these things are pretty high dollar uh, things, and so you know, there those are some of the differences that come to mind right away. Yeah, no, that's, it, that's so interesting because when I talk to other multifamily people and 
they're, you know, I'm jealous of them because of their tax bill and they're jealous of me because of my, my low maintenance. Right. It's, it's, right. it's really interesting. So walk me back as far as when you first started, how much time were you spending in the business to compare to now and how difficult do you think it was to scale that your land business? So <clears throat> I spent a lot of time um, at the very beginning because I was learning a whole new business and learning a whole new model and tripping over myself and, you know, trying to figure out how to get out of my own way and learning different areas and, and learning new software and technology. It was just like learning, 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 learning. And, um, you know, that was, that was hard while trying to actually like build a business and buy properties and sell properties and figuring out how to do that um, and how best to do that, how most efficiently to do that um, while learning how to do it. It's a lot. Um, I would say after, after the first two years, um, I would say that was kind of about the time frame when things started to get a little more on autopilot for me, uh, where I was really uh, able to sort of pull back and I had automate some automations in place. I had uh, a bunch of VAs in place doing a lot of things. And so I really wasn't working in the business that much, although the business depended on me to continue to grow. Uh, that was also a time when I um, was asked to run for public office and and I decided to serve my community and and that took my attention away from continuing to grow the land business. And so I did that one. I served on city council um, for two years, but shortly after getting on, I decided this wasn't for me and I wasn't going to run for re-election. Um, and, and that allowed me to then refocus my efforts uh, on the land business. And that's when I was really able to, I think, figure out how to scale and really add some good automations into it. And now I don't, do that much work in the business. I mean, a few hours a week, um, but I'm working on the business a lot right now, um, getting things to run more smoothly, adding more automations, um, tweaking automations, uh, uh, tweaking um, things that VAs are doing to try to make them a little bit better here and there. Um, there's always something to do, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So do you have a favorite deal? that you've done recently or your um, I should say you've done recently, your team's done recently. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I have, I have different favorite deals. Um, a couple of, a couple of them that sort of come to mind just generally are the offer letter that I sent out to, uh, to buy a property and the owner responds and says, um, I got 29 others. Do you want to buy them all? Um, and, and I actually had two similar deals like that recently, and that was pretty exciting, um, and really, uh, sort of stressed my business and my system, uh, because of being such an influx, um, all at one time. But, um, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty significant. It's hard to, I know you're going to ask me numbers. So before you even ask me numbers, I can't tell you because there's so many moving parts or, or things there. But but I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, a, a favorite deal that was probably in my second year in the business. And you'll remember this because we were at a boot camp in Phoenix and I had sent out uh, a letter and I was acquiring this property and it was going to be a large acquisition. It was a $25,000 acquisition. I, and I was I remember, nervous about I, it. I, I remember this deal. Yeah. I totally remember. Yeah. This. I knew you would. Yeah. And, and I remember talking to you and Scott Todd, and I don't remember who else. I guess Tate was there in this little conversation. And I remember you basically egging me on to buy this property. And if I don't, 
than to give it to you because you would buy it. And that was all I needed to buy this thing. And as it turned out, um, I basically had it sold uh, before I actually owned it and uh, sold it for more than $60,000. Um, and uh, that uh, that was a really fun one because of kind of how it happened and also the numbers. Yeah, no, I I, I remember that deal like it was yesterday. And it was, yeah. And you're like, okay, now I'm doing it. I'm like, right. I'll do it. No problem. <laughs> you're like, okay, that's all I needed. So you, you've done a, a lot of deals. You've, you've gone and you've gone through all the pain of the business for the last six years. So now you want to give back to the community and you have been giving back to the community in various ways. You've been on the mastermind calls for years and you've sort of been this quasi coach and just a, a consistent member of the community. So why coach now? And why do you want to be a coach? I really enjoy helping other people. It doesn't matter whether it's in the land business or anything else. I really truly enjoy helping people. And my throughout my career and the different things that I've done, like my I guess superpower is business and managing money. And, you know, I've never been one that's had like a really big salary or anything like that. But from the time that I was a really a teenager, I've been an excellent money manager and very efficient at that. And that's helped me in my business, uh, businesses over the years. And it just it just fits to me that as I I'm good at that and I like helping people and I love this community that you've put together and the people that you attract to this community like they're my people like these are the people that understand me and understand get how I work and you know how my mind operates and so why wouldn't I want to give back. And that's one of the reasons why I've continued to be active in the mastermind call and come to, I don't even know how many, but I think at least 12 or 13 live boot camps. I don't even know. And I, it's the people. I mean, I want to see you and get a big hug from you, but really it's about everyone that's there. And I love talking to the people and hearing their story and, and maybe just answering a question or, or talking with them about one little thing that might make a difference in their business. And so by becoming a coach, it, it just makes it so that I can do that more and in a little bit more formalized way. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Such a big heart, Jeff Detmer. <laughs> so big. But you're but you're right. I mean, I, you know, I joke, but you know, it is our community is second to none. And I'm not just saying that because you know, you're part of the community. I, I'm saying because literally, and I say this at, at every boot camp, if there's a hundred people in the room, 99 of them actually always pass what I would call the airport test, where if I got stuck in an airport with them, no problem. And it's like that every single boot camp. We it is. and I don't know what it is. It's just magical what what's going on where we're doing something right where we're, we're definitely attracting the right people. We're repelling, we're repelling, uh, the wrong people. And it's, it's so special, uh, for sure. So yeah. What were you going to say? Yeah. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, no, you're absolutely right. That's what, that's what I say all the time when this, con when this comes up in conversation, it's about who you and your personality, it's about who you attract and who you surround yourself with and also who you repel. Because there are people that you don't resonate with, and that's okay. But they almost never find themselves in the room, which means that almost everyone in the room, like, are, is our kind of people. Yeah, and that's just amazing. It's the magic. Yeah, it 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 really is. And then you've got the boot camp magic, which you've experienced many a time, where mm -hmm. you're in the room, and we're teaching and we're training, and then someone closes a deal in real time. And oftentimes it's just using a little slight tweak that they just learned an hour ago. And yeah. it, it makes such a huge difference. 
uh, for sure. So when you're on the mastermind calls, are, do you see any themes where people are needing help in today's market? Or is it kind of I guess all over I would, the board? Well, I mean, the questions are all over the board, but I think that especially today, but really for the past six years, like marketing seems to be, marketing and sales seems to be the areas where people need the most help, have the most questions, um, are get frustrated the most because they've looked to see what others are doing and they've tried to model it and do the same kinds of things and they're not happy with the results that they're getting. And you know, you just you just mentioned about it's sometimes it's just some little slight tweak that they do that makes the difference. And those little slight tweaks or new ideas come up on the mastermind call all the time. And I I do think that that makes a big difference for a lot of people. But I think that's the area where more people struggle um, at different points in time than than any other. Yeah, a- yeah, absolutely. If you were going to put together a, a perfect land investor stew, what ingredients mm-hmm. would you add? What, what do you think wow. would make a, a, a great land investor? Uh, wow. Um, well, grit. I mean, that's a big one. Grit. <laughs> that's a big one. There's that book by Angela Duckworth. Um that uh, is just fantastic, and it, it it you need that you need that to get through the dips that Seth Godin talks about. <laughs> I mean, it, it, those kind of go hand in hand in many ways. But um, I think that's a really hard question, Mark. I mean, there's so many well, different I, things I, I, that I, you I, need honestly, to I, have. I, I think you answered it though. I think ultimately it's about grit because all the all the other ancillary ingredients the the core one is grit can you what's your frustration tolerance can you get can you get knocked down and get back up and get and get back up I, that's, I think that's crucial that's crucial and that's i think that's crucial for life that's crucial for business but especially for a new business where it's so fragile in the beginning there's such a you know you're you're so uncomfortable with so many different skill sets whether it's the analysis of accounting, the analysis of pricing, working on systems and automation, as you mentioned earlier, marketing, and and then sales, and then leader leadership and managing, and it's it's all these things. And and in the beginning, you feel overwhelmed, and you got to take one bite at a time. And I think that's where the coaching really shines, is fortifying that grit. In the clients, I always say about coaching, it's eighty percent mental. It's twenty percent how to. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the other thing that I think is really important to recognize and then figure out what to do with it is the vast majority of the people that I've seen come through the community and get into the land investing business. This is their first business. They're not entrepreneurs. They haven't been business owners. They have a job and they have a nine to five or whatever you know job. They've been an employee. And so not only are they starting a new business, they're figuring out like how to have a business and how to be the boss. And for me, that was not an issue because I've been doing that my whole life. I grew up in a family business that my parents started. And then I had my first business uh, when I was 15. And so like that was not a problem for me, but I see that as a huge problem for a lot of people. And it, 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 um, it, it shows up in lots of different ways for different people. But I think that's a a big piece um, that I can help people with um, as they, start the land business and move forward with it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, Jeff Detmer, I am so excited to be working more closely with you uh, as a land geek coach. I know our whole team knows you, loves you, respects you. And now 
you are bringing your talents to the entire Lange community. And we owe you a huge debt of gratitude. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for your clients. And it's it's going to be one of those things that, you know, when you work with you and get to know you, it's it's transformative. So um, I'm personally excited about that future. But now, Jeff, we're at that point in the podcast where I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Well, a few minutes ago, well, first of all, uh, very, very kind words. And thank you. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but a few minutes ago, you mentioned something that teed up my tip of the week, but you don't know what it is. So you teed it up for me and you didn't even know it. You mentioned about being at boot camp and having someone having boot camp magic because they learned some little slight tweak to um, maybe their marketing or something, right? Right. So my tip of the week is the book, The Slight Edge. <laughs> oh, look at this. By Jeff Olson. Now, this is an older book. I forget, uh, maybe 15, 20 years uh, ago. But this is what this business is all about. It's about all those little things that you can do to improve your business, your marketing, your life, your health. But it's all about baby steps, right? It's all about those little things that you can do to, to make a little bit of progress today and then make a little bit of progress tomorrow. And when you start stacking those little bits of progress on top of each other, and then you get weeks or months or years in the future, and you look back behind you, you see the mountain that you've just climbed, but it was just one step at a time because of all these slight little tweaks that that you've done. So that's my tip of the week. I love it. I haven't read that book. I'm going to have to check it out. Well, before I go to my tip of the week, I've got to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing safely, quickly, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He has closed thousands and thousands of deals and will make you a confident land investor. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, wait, what about the tuition? It ain't going to cost you nothing, guaranteed. You're going to make back that money, 180 days or less, guaranteed. Just show us that you're working it. Learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Jeff Detmer, this has been so great, but I've got to give my tip of the week. I, I want to send people to your website, which is aoklandusa.com uh, aoklandusa.com A-O-K US, wait, aoklandusa.com aoklandusa land. Nope, aoklandusa.com <laughs> I wonder why that uh, domain was available. A OK, <laughs> landusa.com. Uh, check out Jeff, check out his website, what he's been up to, and uh, and reach out to him. Let him know you listen to the podcast. He'll, he'll appreciate it, I'm sure. All right, brother, are we ready to do this? Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, let's let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody. See, thank that you. Wasn't so, that wasn't so bad. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.